I want you to talk basically about the position of state representative. I want you to talk about what exactly that means. Um, and I want you to talk about, um, we're, I just want you to talk about a state rep and what a state rep does in Jeff City, okay? Just specifically what your job is. Um, and this is also with the knowledge that the Democrats are not in the majority, so they're in the minority, so that the way his job is might be a little different than somebody that is in the majority. I'm not sure. That's why we're asking him. Yeah. So tell us about the work that happens in Jeff City when you're a state legislator. Uh, well, we go down just the, the basic sort of logistics of it first. It's the easiest part to explain, I think. We go down in January. Um, usually it's the first week of January, um, and we are in session from the first week of January until the second or third week of May, depending on um, some different factors that I'm not sure anybody really truly understands all the way, but usually we don't go past May 18th. Um, and then after that, we go back into our regular jobs. So I'm an attorney. There are other people that I serve with that are uh, that own grocery stores. They go back to their grocery stores. Uh, there are people that are construction workers. They go back to work in construction. There are pipe fitters and plumbers. There are school teachers. Um, we run the gamut in terms of employment. And everybody goes back home after that May 18th date. And while we're there, we have two main roles. One, one of the major roles, at least from my perspective, being a member of the minority, one of the major roles we play is to uh, serve as, as a liaison to state departments. Um, so that, for instance, the Missouri Department of Revenue, if they're struggling to get your tax returns out in a timely manner, you can contact my office and we will get somebody on top of it and try to figure out either why the income tax returns aren't being completed in an adequate amount of time, or hopefully get you a result and get them back for you in an adequate amount of time. Um, so anytime there's a state level department that uh, a constituent is having an issue with, uh, they can contact my office and we will work uh, as a liaison for them to be able to get hopefully a better result uh, in terms of what they're looking for. The other role we play, other than being a liaison for our constituents, is to serve on the committees and to vote on legislation as it comes to the House floor. So. Individual members are uh, assigned by the Speaker of the House to certain committees that they might be on. There are special committees, there are standing committees, and then there are joint committees. Uh, joint committees are committees between senators and representatives. Uh, special committees are committees that are formed by order of the Speaker. During any certain period of uh, the legislative session, the Speaker has the authority to establish a special committee. So that last term, I was on what was called the Special Committee for Litigation Reform. Um, it was more or less the Tort Reform Committee, but that was where a lot of the civil um, so-called tort reform bills were being passed or being sent to. Um, and then the standing committees are committees that have and will continue to exist for probably as long as we have the, the system of legislation that we have now. So that for instance, the Education Committee is a standing committee, Agriculture is a standing committee, and the Judiciary Committee, which I'm on, uh, is a standing committee. We also have Economic Development, which is a standing committee. I'm also on that. Uh, as many people know, insurance, the insurance industry is a state-regulated entity, not a federally regulated uh, business. And we have a committee on insurance policy that I sit as the ranking member on. So um, we sit on those committees. Bills are filed. After they're filed, they're referred by the speaker to one of those committees that does the initial vetting. We read the bills. Uh, we think about the bills. We discuss the bills. We hear public input on the bills. And then eventually we vote on whether or not the committee thinks the bill should pass from our committee to a rules committee. And the rules committee is responsible for basically doing just the fiscal impact of the bill. So that, for instance, if we want to make a law change and it might end up having an impact on the state budget, that rules committee is assigned with the job of figuring out what the impact on the state budget would be. And that's basically their exclusive uh, authority. And then from there, it gets referred back to the floor. If the majority floor leader wants to have the bill called to the floor, he will recognize the representative that initially filed the bill. And that representative will have the opportunity to stand up, have the bill introduced, have the bill titled, and then proceed to having the bill perfected, which is an opportunity for everyone on the floor, all 163 members of us to offer amendments and see if we can get them on or not. And then third read, and once the bill's been third read, then that's when the speaker sends it over to the Senate 
and the bill begins its whole process all over again on the Senate side. So the two roles of the state rep to be a liaison with our constituents for the state government departments and to go through the process of legislating to change the public policy of the state of Missouri. What are the, uh, what, what do you get the most phone calls about for cons- constituent services? Um, it, it, it runs the gamut. Um, we had in this past uh, spring, late winter and early spring, we had uh, a telecommunications company coming through my district that was uh, running fiber optic cables. And in some cases, constituents had um, their, their property was being dug up. Uh, some property damage was being incurred. Um, It was brought to my attention that that was happening because the telecommunications company never really notified my office that they were going to be there. So it kind of came out of the blue. And then, you know, I drove through the district, made note of all the places that they were, you know, needing to sort of clean up, fix the things that they were doing, make repairs to people's personal property. And because they are a publicly regulated private industry, in other words, um, they're regulated by. Um, oh, utilities like the board of Utah. public service commission, public so, service commission. Okay. okay. So um, because they're regulated by the public service commission, um, that's a, a public entity more or less. And they could contact my office. I would liaise with, the company that was installing them and make sure that they would come back and fix the property as necessary because if they wouldn't, then they would have to answer uh, to the public service commission. Um, Public service commission has the authority to levy fines and uh, they're the ones that regulate who gets the next contract with the state in terms of private companies providing public service such as that. So having a bad track record of uh, taking care of people, taking care of constituents property, might interfere with the company's ability to go back in and get a new contract next year too. So um, that was one of the ones we got calls on frequently this last year. Two years ago, Grace Moore was having the neighborhood of Grace Moore, which is that neighborhood of Kansas City that sits right below the Claycomo Ford plant, just south of the Claycomo Ford plant. Um, they were having a, a very serious problem with power outages. Um, I was able to contact KCPNL and get KCPNL to commit to replacing the grid and Last summer and this summer, they have experienced a dramatic reduction in the number of power failures that they've experienced over the summers. Two summers ago, they had of the first seven weekends in summer, and I count the weekends in summer as from the day school lets out to the day school starts. So of the seven weekends in that time span, um, four of them, the residents of Grace Moore had experienced power outage of 12 hours or more, which is absolutely unacceptable under any circumstance, especially in light of the fact that many of my constituents require power for things like refrigerating medication, for dialysis machines, for infants nursing who have um, their breast milk and freezers, things of that nature where people absolutely have to have power. Uh, Spending 12 hours more without power is not something that any of them should ever have to experience, especially if they're paying their power bills on time. So got in touch with KCPNL, got them to commit to replace the grid and to making the uh, changes that they needed to make in order to provide a better service, and we were able to successfully do that. That was the big call three years ago that most people were calling about and concerned about. Um, other than that, we have we have a regular group of people that call in um, about their income tax returns being delayed. We have a certain number of people that will always call and make suggestions on legislation, things that they think need to be changed, which is always helpful. I like hearing from constituents, especially if they have a, what they think is a good idea or what is a good idea on a law change that we might want to see. So uh, I encourage that kind of stuff. That, that kind of contact is important to me.